Hey, sports card collectors, investors, my collectibles friends. I hope that everyone is having a good Martin Luther King Day today. Um, it's Hopefully you, you have the day off, or at least part of the day off. You can enjoy it with your family, with your friends. Today, I'm going to be talking about three ways that I'm saving money to buy or invest in more sports cards. So stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks very much for joining again today. If you have not subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button, the notification bell, karate chop the like button if you like what you hear. Uh, on this channel, we talk a lot about collectibles, a lot of sports card talk, a lot of um, collectibles in general, graded video games, graded action figures, and then we wrap personal finance into that. Today, I'm going to take more of a personal finance track, talking about um, saving ideas as different ways to kind of be able to invest in whether it be sports cards or even traditional investments, stocks, bonds, real estate. Let's go ahead and dig right into it. All right, first off, one thing that I really try to do where possible, it's not always not always possible to do this, but in many instances, many circumstances, it is, and it's really asking for a discount wherever I happen to be. I'm really always kind of negotiating uh, wherever I go, if I'm buying a product or a service, or just trying to find a coupon, trying to find different ways to pay less because let's face it, if we have, if we're not paying as much for goods and services, it allows us to then be able to invest in other things. So I think that's really important, and it's something that a lot of people will just pay retail or just kind of take it for what it is. Even if we're talking about sports cards, buying sports cards on eBay or maybe on Starstock or ComC, instead of hitting just that buy it now immediately make an offer make an offer you know a lot of times you, you don't have much to lose there and negotiation is just a great skill to learn um, it's not something that i'm perfect at but i'm always working at it and there are certain key things that are very helpful if you are negotiating in person one thing that people get very uncomfortable with are awkward silences don't be afraid of awkward silences and in other words if you have a card that, that you want and they're asking a hundred dollars for it and you're kind of going back and forth and maybe they're getting maybe they're even kind of like you know a little bit you know rude about it like hey you know 80 is the best i can do just sit there and just sit in silence and just wait just wait and don't say anything and just see what happens they might move away from you and say hey thanks i appreciate it but they also just because of that awkward silence they might say you know what seventy dollars will take it and because they're uncomfortable in that awkward silence so when negotiating anything in life just get comfortable with awkward silences i know that that sounds strange but human behavior does not allow us to be comfortable. We are not comfortable in that in that arena. We, you know, somebody needs to speak, someone needs to make that deal, you know, and so internally, you just have to be the one to not speak first. There's kind of an old adage of, you know, the the person that speaks first in a negotiation loses. So, and and it'll happen too where maybe you make the offer at $80, let's just say on a $100 item. And they don't say anything. The other side is kind of like pondering, thinking about it. And then you know what people will do because they're uncomfortable they'll say you know what I, I could do 85 I could do 85 or 90 you know because they're uncomfortable just don't speak let it all kind of play it out let it let it play it out and let it happen this takes this takes practice because it's just not something that as human beings we're very comfortable doing but I promise you that you would be very surprised at how many deals you can make um, and how much you can get kind of discounted off if you're just patient and let the process play itself out. Next up, guys, we're going to talk about clothes shopping. And this is something where I think when you're when you're younger, this is something that's kind of important um, or it's, you know, it's kind of keeping up with certain trends. Um, but, you know, clothes shopping in a lot of ways is just impulsive or it's like, you know, you're killing time and you're out shopping and you're looking at clothes and you end up buying something. But in reality, it's like, do you need that 11th shirt? Do you need that 11th pair of pants? Probably not. You know, do you need that name brand specifically? Or could you settle for maybe an off brand or just maybe wait for it to be on sale or discounted or something? Paying retail for clothes nowadays with all the different options there are to buy clothes as far as brands, online, all the different sales. I can't keep track of all the sales that I get, the offers through, through email, whether it be 
Old Navy or, um, you know, any of these places, uh, Johnson and Murphy's, um, you know, there's all sorts of different clothing companies out there and they're all competing, you know, for business. And so they're always offering discounts. So for me, clothes shopping is a big one because a lot of times you end up, if you just take, if there's something you want, I, I always just take 24 hours, just stop. Like, okay, if I want this, then I, I take 24 hours, sleep on it. And you know what happens a lot of times the next day I'm like, ah, I didn't really want that anyway. That's what happens. It's kind of that psyche of just just pause, step back, and then come back to it. And if it's something you want, great. And if it's not, then then it's not. The last one I'm going to talk about today is a more of a general idea, and just a I think it's just some, a good practice, however you look at it, and it's keeping up with the Joneses. And for those that don't really understand, kind of or haven't heard that term before, keeping up with the Joneses is trying to keep up with your peers or trying to keep up with with other people in general. Maybe it's people you don't even know. Um, you know, in the age of social media and human behavior, we're always comparing ourselves. Are we are we doing the right things? Are we, um, you know, we're always competing, you know, with with other people in some capacity. Um, and we're, even if we're not necessarily speaking of it, it's just, it's just human behavior to look and, you know, want what someone else has. It's very common for people to do that. And keeping up with the Joneses is trying to put on a show, essentially. Maybe it's buying the new car or buying the new suit or, or whatever it is to try to show that you are successful and that you are keeping up with the successful people. And it's really a never ending game because there's always going to be people that have more money than you unless you're, you know, Jeff Bezos or, you know, a handful of people on the planet. Uh, but, you know, you're always going to be chasing, chasing, chasing. And that's just a never ending game. That's really just kind of a miserable one. And so, you know, that's something where keeping up with the Joneses is, and even if it's just peers, you know, it's friends that, that might, you know, have, um, you know, uh, whether it be housing or cars or whatever it is, you know, you have to do what's best for you and your family, and that's really it. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks about it at all. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, trying to uh, please people or get people's approval, and a lot of times it's people that don't even matter in your life. I see, uh, you know, see people uh, do this. Um, I've reached a point in my life. I'm almost forty. I'm, I'm going to turn forty this year, and I really just don't care. You know, it's like if if you like if you like me, great, and if you don't, that's fine. I, I'm good. You know, but I think it, when you're younger, you do. And when I was younger too, you know, when I was in my 20s and you know early 30s, I cared a lot more about those sorts of things. You know, what what are my parents going to think? What are my friends going to think? Now it's really just what what are how is this going to affect my small family? And if if that all works out, then great. And everybody else, nah, doesn't really matter. So guys, thank you very much for joining me here. I hope that this added some sort of value or some sort of entertainment to you today on this Martin Luther King Monday. Hope that you all have an amazing week ahead. Stay positive, stay healthy, and stay together. Have a great day, guys.